Greetings, distinguished guests. I am Tehrans, and welcome back to more Werewolf Heart of the Forest. Last time we, um, basically we learned kind of about werewolf culture. Uh, so we kind of learned about some of the different tribes. We learned, um, kind of the history of the werewolves and a little bit of the pack structure, um, things like that. So, uh, let's take my time. Balance. I took my time analyzing the situation I found myself in. I changed. I could s I could shift my shape at will, but my mind worked as good as ever. I knew what to do. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. We need to make the loggers fear nature. The loggers need to feel that nature itself is against them, I decided. We should talk to the spirits of the forest. Cornell had another idea. Something is rotten in the town, Cornell commented, and I think that we should find and neutralize local forces that supported the logging. Pat just laughed. Pat just laughed. We should create a diversion. There are too little of us here for a direct confrontation with the loggers. I continued with my plan. I'll talk to the spirits and see what they can do to help us, I continued. If nature itself destroys the loggers' equipment, there's no one to blame. Lisa looked thoughtful. I'll introduce you to the spirits you need to talk to. Daniel Beam, spoken like a true theurge. Uh, you were born under a crescent moon, weren't you, Maya? How did he know? I looked at him in surprise. How did he know? Spiritual. Mom always told me that when she gave birth to me, she saw the crescent moon through the window, sharper and brighter than ever before. I nod. So, your highest stack must kind of determine your auspice, it looks like. You're right, I nod. How did you know? Garu, born under the crescent moon, are shamans and healers, said Lisa, just like you and me. A worthy theurge always acts with wisdom, added Olga. Your place in your werewolf society will be determined by your renown. You can earn glory through defeating my enemies and succeeding at dangerous quests. You can earn honor by following your moral imperative and upholding the laws of the Garu. You can earn wisdom by acting efficiently and thinking before you act. Your renown will change as you play, contributing to Maya's legend and modeling the Garu. No pressure at all. I felt overwhelmed. Olga must have sensed my confusion. Come on, we have a lot to discuss. She patted my shoulder, and we have to find your phone and wallet. So I followed her. I nodded and followed her. I had to tie up loose ends in my old life. Back to the beginning. I'm sitting on the bus. The sun is streaming through the windows. It is... The sun streaming through the windows is making it hard to see. The road cuts through a dense old forest. My mind wanders. I remember doing something important, walking among the trees, looking for something, losing something I loved, gaining something unwanted. But then I'm fully awake and the memories scatter away. We're almost there, said Anya. I did some searching. She looks at me from her over her phone. And this place is amazing. The last primordial forest in Europe. She's alive. Anya, I laughed. You're here. You wouldn't believe I'm not able to finish. I start to cough. Uh, I spit blood. My throat is sore. My lungs hurt. I need to get out. I hit the window and it moves, but it doesn't break. It's gray and dull, and some of it stays on my hands. The substance is sticky and makes my skin itch. Spiders. My hand is crawling with a thousand with thousands of tiny spiders, weaving their webs around with tremendous speed. The whole bus is filled with them. I fight. I try to fight them, but they are too small and there are too many of them. After a few seconds, I am covered in cobwebs, unable to move. There is a hiss. I hear a hiss. And slowly a long, dark, thin shape comes out of Anya's ripped neck. A black snake 
that reeks of rotten meat, acid, and oil. Don't fight, Maya. You are already mine, it says. Just like your grandpa. And then it kisses me. Ooh. Chapter 5. A plan. Did anything change? Nope. Uh, friendly, sympathetic art. I woke up in my bed in the B and B, and for a moment, thought the whole werewolf business business had been a dream. Then I looked at Anya's empty bed, exactly how she, how she'd left it in the morning. We went to see the protesters. She was dead. The reality of the situation hit me. Anya was dead. I killed her. I had to clean up my mess. Anxious, I packed her things. Looking over my shoulder, I packed my things. The plan was bulletproof. I needed to stick to the plan. She said she used her favor of some network spirits to hack Anya's phone. I would log into some towers in Germany and the Netherlands, pinging the social networks a few times before anyone noticed anything was amiss. There would be nothing to tie the disappearance to us. Uh, my hands were trembling. Who had I become? My hands were trembling and I was sweating bullets. Fuck. Fuck. I punched the closed door and my hand went straight through the wood, splinters digging deep into my flesh. And then I lost it. Pain hits me like a wrecking ball. Every bone in my body breaks and moves and resets. I roar in agony. Panting and growling, I rise and rise and rise. I'm an eight foot tall killing machine. I am sad and I hurt. I'm sad and hurt and my friend is dead. I wail, overcome with guilt and the window panes shatter. The shards of glass glimmering in the sun. Smash the room to pieces. One flick in my wrist and the wardrobe turns into a cloud of splintered wood. I break the bed. I lift the bed and smash it against the floor. I wreck the room. Punch holes in the walls. I smash the windows. I tear Anya's things to pieces. Stop it, someone shouts through the door. I'm calling the police. Change back. I have to stop. I change back. Listening to the shouts and sirens, I quickly pack what remained of my things. What was I thinking? I asked my reflection in a shard of broken mirror. I didn't know how to answer. I shrugged. Whatever the answer was, it was now Maya the werewolf's problem, not Naya the student. Werewolf's problem. Maya the student was dead. I took my bag and left. I dropped my bags in the camp and ran through the plan one more time. They expected me to act like a theorist. We also discussed other plans, both more mundane. Uh, let's go with the theorist route. Because that's what I want to try to do, I guess. I needed to talk to the spirits of the forest, and for that, I needed Lisa's help. Until I came along, she was the only shaman in the two packs. She was... So she was finally happy. So she was happy to finally have an apprentice. I had a lot to learn. Before I could face the spirits, I had to attune to the forest and learn the proper rites and meanings of addressing spirits. Finally, we were ready. After a few days of camping in the forest, fasting and meditating, Lisa said I was ready. The spirits of the forest were waiting. sacred hunt. The sun was setting. We stood in the middle of the clearing and waited. I chanted the proper words. I chanted the proper words and called upon the secret names of the forest. Then we waited. First, there was a murmur. Then a whisper among the trees. A rustle of leaves in the quiet, windless night. I closed my eyes. I closed my eyes and the smell of feathers and the night washed over me. Something whispered inside my skull. A voice like small claws scratching bone. What do you want? Uh, we needed, we needed help. 
Send the wind and send the rain, O oh great forest, I chanted. Drown their machines in the mud. Break the dead trees so they fall on their heads. Help us break their teeth. The rustling continued, and the scratching becomes almost unbearable. Yes, whispered the voice inside my skull, but there is a price. I was ready. I am ready for anything, I shouted. Hunt us, young one. Find us and catch us. Then we will help you. And the presence is gone. Lisa smiled at me. Go while the scent is fresh, I advised. She advised, you can do it. I changed. Uh, smart. Fast, heavy. Let's uh, on camera. Let's go with the. Uh, I was Hispo, the monstrous wolf. The pain was overwhelming. My spine cracked and twisted. My knees and ankles broke, and I fell onto the ground. My jaw shattered and rearranged itself. My whole skin was on fire, ripping and. Browning fur. I howled in agony. When I rose, panting and spitting blood, I was Hispo. With strong paws, mighty jaws, and a mane of fur. More than a wolf, scary and monstrous. I sniffed the air. I was on all fours, my nose full of scents, my ears full of noise. I turned my head left and right, sniffing the air. There. I caught the scent and jumped towards a shape that emerged from the bushes. It was a stag, pretty and lithe, a perfect vessel for the spirits. It stood there for a moment, then caught my scent and bolted. I ran after my prick. The stag was fast, but I was faster. I smelled its fear and heard its hooves beating on the ground. Every pounce, I was getting. At, with every pounce, I was closing the distance between us. I focused on the hunt. I blocked out everything apart from my prey. Forest faded away, leaving only us and the hunt. I was getting closer. I could smell its sweat, hear its heartbeat in the darkness. Uh, I pushed myself to the limits. I pushed myself to the limit. My muscles and lungs burned. It was almost too easy. I launched from the ground with my hind legs and landed on the stag's back. The hunt was over. <clears throat> I held the prey down. Change to get a better grip. I growled and changed. I was Galabro, the near human form. <clears throat> my muscles spasmed and rearranged themselves. My jaw cracked and my mouth filled with blood. I clenched my fists and claws drove into my palms. Panting and whimpering, I changed. I was more than human, wolfish, strong, scary. I pinned my prey to the ground. It went limp, then I start... <clears throat> And then started to started struggling again. I realized that the spirit I was chasing was already elsewhere, but it was too late. Something moved behind me. Something moved behind me. Something big. I turned around. I gulped and slowly turned around. At first, I thought it was a bison standing there with its head lowered, but then it straightened and stood on its hind legs. Ivy was wrought around its arms and its eyes were dark and wise. My, uh, it said in his voice so deep it shook my bones. It's you. I bowed. <clears throat> I bowed before the forest incarnate. I caught your servant, I said, and now I am at your service. I have a plan and I need your help. I was pushing my luck. I knew I was pushing my luck. No, said the vice in with a sad voice, haunt me. Swing knocked me over. It hit me and a shock made me change. I was Krenos, the war form. I spasm, my bones grew in reset, claws break out from my fingers, and fangs sprout in my mouth. I taste blood. I roar in pain as a muscle. Um. Ugh. I don't like any of these. Monstrous bison slapped the side of my head. I go for its throat. I howl and go for its throat. It hit me back, but I lock my jaws and tear it. it tosses me on the ground. And then I make a mistake. Then the hoof hits my temple and I black out for a moment. 
I lie there panting. Ah. My body resets itself to familiar shape. Broken bones fuse again, muscles and sinew move under my skin. I cried and thrashed. Then I was human again, with keen eyes, nimble fingers, and a silver tongue, a wolf in sheep's clothing. As I lay there, an owl landed on my shoulder. It lowered its head towards my ear. We won't help you, weakling, it said with a voice of trees and stone and the bird and birds. And it disappeared into the mist. Oh no, I failed. It doesn't kill us. I couldn't sleep that night. Closing the deal with the spirits was supposed to be my rite of passage, and I failed. What would be the consequences? I didn't know, and that scared me. Met soon after sunrise. We met soon after sunrise in the same, on the same clearing where I woke up for the first time as a gallery. Lisa looked at us all inside. Our patrons were looking at her expectantly, so she stepped towards the center of the clearing. I am the theurge of the sept, and I'm here to make sure we do things the right way. I held my breath. She turned to me and I held my breath. Maya, come forth. You are, are you a cub who seeks Recognition as an adult? I answered. I am, I answered solemnly. Are you an applicant to a tribe? Lisa asked again. I confirmed. I am, I answered. Who speaks for this cub? Asked Olga, stepping forward. I do, Lisa answered. I am Zoria of the Sabirak Beerge of the Morning Wolf Mother Pack. I observed the cub on her mission. I'm here to tell the story. Secret names. Cool. I wonder if they all had cool secret names. They probably had. I love that. I love the ancient spiritual vibe of it all. Has the cub passed her challenge? Asked Olga. Has the cub passed her challenge? Asked Olga. Um, do I admit? I'll admit it. I sag knowing that I failed. Lisa is sympathetic. She failed, the was the inevitable answer, but she fought as bravely she fought bravely against overwhelming odds, and I think she's ready. I wondered what would happen next. So what now? I asked, should I pack my things and go home or what? We should have spent more time teaching the cub and testing her when she, and test her when she was ready. Lisa gave Olga her I told you so look. There was no time, Olga snapped. I waited in silence. There are so many things I wanted to say, but I bit my tongue and stayed quiet. I'll vouch for her, Cornell put his hand on my arm. The challenge was unfair, and she did well for a cup. I waited. I don't like either of the other two options. I waited for a decision. So be it, said Lisa after a while. If anything goes wrong, the cup is your responsibility. Lisa turned to me. Have you chosen your name? Lisa turned to me. I knew secret name. Suddenly I remembered my grandfather talking about his old friends. He never used their real names. They were always Thunder or Grey or Needle. I always thought it was a gorilla thing or some kind of war name. Now I wasn't sure anymore. How to capture my whole life, my aspirations, my personality, my heritage in one name. I cleared my throat. Mishura, which was Polish for Gale. My new name is Witchura, a gal, I answered, thinking about the wrath of the four spirits unseen and yet impossible to ignore. As for the tribe, choosing a tribe was another matter. I wanted to be, it was complicated, and I wanted to be a black. After getting to know Olga and Cornell better, I had, I decided to become a black beard. Olga agreed to mentor me. Only one thing remained to end the ceremony and make me a full-fledged guard. I had to join a pack. I had already sworn to the wolf mother. As my fate had already been tied with the wolf mother, I chose her as my patron and joined Olga's pack. And so it was done. According to the two ancient rites, Lisa painted the mystical glyph of my tribe on my sternum. Disappeared after a moment, but whenever I closed my eyes, I could feel its warm touch between my breasts. 
Witura of the Black Furies, the urge of the Morning Wolf Mother Pack. Welcome to our sept, she said solemnly. Then she howled. Howls rose towards the sky. They sang about ancient laws of war, status, and secrecy. I remembered only a few. Combat the worm when, wherever it dwells and whenever it breeds. Submit to those of a higher station. Respect those beneath you. The veil shall not be lifted. Join the song. I threw my head back and howled with my sep. I was a cub no more. I was ready to tell my own stories, to earn my place in the pack, to howl my own songs. I hope this is the start of a new chapter. Yep. All right. This seems like a good place to stop. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time with what might be the last episode of Werewolf Heart of the Forest.